Now, up to this point, we have talked about Kolmogorov's axioms and the corollaries that we can derive from them. Now, these axioms and the corollaries, they provide a set of rules for computing probabilities of events in terms of other events, right? So if you know the probability of A, if you, have, if you know the probability of B, if you know the probability of A intersection B, then, for instance, you can compute the probability of A union B. But the question is, how do I know the probability of A? Or how do I know the probability of B? So the question is, what about the absolute probabilities of basic events, elementary events, in your sample space? So these we will call the priors, or a priori probabilities. OK, so at this point, we need an initial probability assignment, which we call priors. This is essentially an assumption, OK? This is your choice an assignment you make, okay? This is based on sort of your belief on uh, the likelihood of each event. So at this point, you are actually making an educated guess, let's say. For instance, what is the probability of the outcome three when you throw a die, okay? So if you do not have uh, anything to the contrary, you will assume that the, the, the die is fair, right? In which case, you will assign the probability of 1 over 6 to each of the outcomes. But you see, that is your assumption. At this point, you do not actually know whether it's a fair die or not. Okay? And you do not control the physical situations you perform the random experiment in. But since you have no reason to believe otherwise, you will assume that this sample space has equal probable outcomes. Therefore, you will assign one over six probability to each of them. But do not forget that is your assignment. In other words, that is your assumption, okay? Either you make an assumption or somebody gives you the values. Actually, that is the reason why we call them priors. Okay, these are the values you assign prior to any knowledge you have about the system. Okay, of course, we have talked about this. A probability assignment of particular importance is the case of equally likely outcomes. We also call this equal probable outcomes. Okay, if the case of equal probable outcomes, in the case of equal probable outcomes, if the sample space is countable, with the size of k, okay, then each outcome has a 1 over k probability. Okay, of course, here we are assuming k is a finite number. Okay, our sample space is a, a finite set. And by Laplace principle, the probabilities should be 1 over k. If this is the case, to compute the probabilities of uh, any event, you will use combinatorial counting methods, which we have talked about last week. Simple example here. Let's assume the random experiment is a three coin toss. Okay, so this could be um, like tossing three different coins simultaneously or one by one or using the same coin. Okay. And of course, we will assume the coin is fair, okay? And we can define the sample space in this form, right? Heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, etc. We have eight distinct outcomes. And here, um, the observation is that we are actually uh, distinguished between the order of the coins, okay? And in this case, since we are assuming the coins are fair, these eight outcomes are equal probable. So you should assign one over eight probability to each of them. But as we have talked about earlier, the sample space can also be defined in this way, counting the number of, let's say, heads. It could also apply to number of tails. So it could be zero, one, two, or three. But now you see this sample space is not equal probable because the probability of 
zero heads and three heads, it's one over eight. And the probability of one head and two heads, it's three over eight. Okay? So equal probable assumption also is dependent on how you define the sample space. Right. Now, if the sample space is finite, you can use combinatorial methods. And if the sample space is uncountable, equal probable outcomes apply to intervals rather than specific points, right? This means uh, you have a sample space that cannot be listed. It's uncountable. That means you have something like sample space is a continuum, like the, e, the interval between zero and five, okay? So it's not like just zero, one, two, three, four, five. For instance, the outcome could be 3.5, it could be 2.74, it could be pi, it could be any number, any real number between zero and five. Okay, so it's not countable. I cannot list the possible outcomes. Therefore, I cannot assign individual probabilities to each of them, okay? This is not a discrete sample space. In fact, it's going to be the basic distinction between uh, discrete random variables and continuous random variables when we study them. And in this case, the, the assumption of equal probable outcomes is going to apply to intervals. So this is the sample space. And in this case, you see the probability of the sample space will be one, okay? So using a very simple metric, the length of this interval is five, right? Therefore, I can write under equal probable outcomes assumption, the probability assigned to the interval zero to two should be two divided by five, which is the length of this interval two divided by the length of the sample space, which is five, okay? And as you see, for individual outcomes, let's say what is the probability of the outcome being exactly three, right? This will be the interval from three up to three, right? No other point involved, just one point. But you see, based on our concept of length, the length of this interval is zero. Therefore, the probability assigned to this should be zero, okay? So this is a counterintuitive result, let's say. Could be surprising to some of you, but if you have uh, an uncountable, an infinite, let's say, uncountably infinite sample space, the probability of each specific outcome is zero. But of course, the probability of intervals such as these are not.